a winch is an amazing tool that gives you the confidence and the ability to go exploring, knowing that if you do get bogged, or your mate gets bogged, or even if you just come across someone out there on the tracks who's stuck, well, if you've got your winch, then you've got an ability to get a vehicle free and get rolling again. But just like any tool, things can go wrong with winches. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily diagnose and repair the most common problems with any brand of winch. And even if you haven't got anything wrong with your winch right now, this is still essential viewing because it could quite literally get you out of a sticky situation one day. So tuck it away into the memory banks. Righto, let's get stuck into it. So just like any sort of mechanical issue, always check the basics first. If you plug your winch controller in and there's no response from the winch in either direction or it cuts in and out intermittently, pop the bonnet and check that the winch isolator is in the on position. I've forgotten to do this more than once, so don't feel bad if this solves your problem. The isolator can be removed and cleaned if it doesn't feel like it's engaging properly as you twist. Disconnect the positive lead from the battery and open by unscrewing both ends of the isolator in an anti-clockwise direction. There's also two little grub screws that you need to remove on this isolator. Be careful when separating the two halves to avoid losing the internal spring. Check nothing's built up inside the isolator and that it's making a positive contact when it's engaged. Next, check for operation of the winch controller. Make sure the pins aren't bent or broken, and with a small flat blade screwdriver, very slightly pry apart them like this. The same as on a trailer plug. This ensures a proper connection when plugged into the control box. And if you've got a Dominator Extreme winch with a wireless controller, just make sure of course that the battery hasn't gone missing or gone flat and replace it as necessary. While you've got the bonnet open, check that the connections to your battery are done up tightly by giving them a wiggle. Winches draw heaps of power under load, so it's vital that these connections are done up tightly. If they've been loose for a while, corrosion may have built up under the terminals. Remove them one by one and sand clean using a bit of sandpaper. Give it a quick hit of electrical contact cleaner, then refit and tighten properly. So the next step is to check the connections on the winch motor because they can get knocked loose and come loose over time, especially if you've been working around down there, installing a driving light wiring harness and servicing your engine. And for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull the grill out or at least part way so I've got better access down to the winch. Because we're operating in a tight space and we're using a spanner to tighten the connections, you must disconnect the power to the winch or you risk shorting things out by accidentally touching another terminal or a metal part of the vehicle. One by one, pull back the rubber isolator boots and check for cleanliness and tightness of the connection. If the connections are loose or dirty, carefully remove them one by one, clean up with sandpaper and contact cleaner and refit. Make sure you wiggle the isolator boots properly back into position for each connector. And don't forget about the earth cable that's typically located on the opposite side of the winch motor to the power cables. On the Dominator X and Dominator Extreme winches, there's also a small diameter earth cable that goes to the control box. If you remove this, make sure to reconnect it, but either way, physically inspect it to make sure there's no break in the connection. If there is, it must be repaired or the control box just won't operate. Once all connections are confirmed as clean and tight, reconnect the winch isolator and check for winch operation again. So if that didn't get your winch working, then the next step is to grab yourself a paper clip or a short run of electrical wire like I've got here. We're gonna use it to momentarily bridge out a couple of the pins on the plug on the side of the control box. That way we can diagnose whether the solenoids within the control box are working. And a word of warning here though, this will work for Dominator X and Dominator Extreme winches using these exact instructions. But I can't guarantee that it'll work for every brand of winch out there. So if you're gonna do it to a different brand of winch, make sure you consult the owner's manual first for the wiring diagram. With the isolator connected to the on position, use a paper clip to momentarily bridge these two terminals here next to this small keyway cutout. You'll get a small spark and should hear a click as the relay engages and the winch should spool out. Next, use the paper clip to bridge these two terminals across the top next to this small arrow mark. Again, you'll get a small spark, hear the relay engage, and the winch would then spool in the opposite direction. If the control box and the winch don't respond the right way, it points to an issue inside the control box typically. 
because these are mounted right at the front of your vehicle, they're subjected to mud, dirt, and debris, and often the issue is as simple as removing the control box cover and cleaning with sandpaper and contact cleaner. Before removing the control box, once again disconnect the winch isolator. Then unbolt the control box from its mounting location and you'll be able to access these screws on the rear. Undo them and you can separate the housing from the control box. However, it will still be connected via the wiring, so don't be too rough with it. Using contact cleaner and sandpaper, give all accessible connections a good clean and retighten, and then give the entire assembly a spray of contact cleaner before reassembling, refitting to your vehicle, and then connecting the isolator back again. Now, here is the simplest trick that you will ever learn when it comes to keeping your winch in good running order. After every four wheel drive trip, or once a month when you wash your vehicle, spool your winch all the way out and then spool it back in under tension. This gets the motor and the gearbox turning over, gets it warmed up and prevents things from getting stuck through non-use. So typically you'd spool the winch out by disengaging the clutch and pulling it out manually, but the whole point here is to get the winch nice and warm and get everything turning over. So we're spooling the winch out under power. At any time that you're running your winch in or out, it's always good practice to have your car running and just idling. That way you don't risk flattening your battery, not being able to start your car the next time. And also you make sure you've got full power going from your alternator to the winch. When spooling back in, use some sort of tension as you wind the rope back in. The easiest way is to connect to a solid anchor point and winch slightly uphill, using the weight of the vehicle as the tension. And a word of warning here, be smart about what you anchor your winch to. Yes, you're not bogged, but you're still putting a lot of tension on the winch, so you need a proper strong recovery point. And of course, use safety gear too. This also gives you an opportunity to inspect the rope for damage, and as long as you're winching in a straight line, we'll ensure the rope is neat and can be unspooled easily the next time you use it. Now, there is one more thing that you can do if your winch still isn't working, but it's so much easier to show you how to do it on the bench as opposed to in a bull bar. So I'm gonna hand you over to my mate Mitch, who will show you how to hotwire your winch. It's that video right there.